Good morning, motor cars. It is Friday, June 23rd, and we've just come off that lovely, lovely picnic yesterday where I stuffed myself on hot dogs, hamburgers, and some really, really good baked beans that I'd love to get the recipes for. Um, thanks to everybody for all that you've done and all that you continue to do to make motor cars such a great place that we won best Cleveland workplace. I am really proud of us. I know that the Giles are too. It really feels good to be here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any birthdays or anniversaries this weekend, but I do have a couple things for days in history. In 1902, which was 115 years ago, Mercedes registered as a brand name. In 1972, President Richard Nixon signed the Higher Education Act into law which includes the Title IX legislation that you may have heard about lately, and which ended discrimination in higher education programs, including funding for sports and other extracurricular activities for women, and also for folks that were black or other ethnic minorities. In 1973, President Nixon's advisor, H.R. Haldeman, advised the president to, quote, tell the FBI to stay the hell out of this Watergate investigation business. Then, of course, we learned a lesson about all that stuff, and uh, maybe it applies present day. 1989, almost 30 years ago, the first modern Batman movie was released with Michael Keaton as the title character and Jack Nicholson as the Joker. And I remember that everybody I knew that was of a certain age back then was walking around saying, I'm Batman. 1992, John Gotti, head of the Gambino crime family and sometimes called the Teflon Don because he kept skating out of... Uh, trials basically not being charged, was sentenced to life in prison on 14 counts of conspiracy to commit murder and racketeering. When the verdict was read, hundreds of his supporters stormed the building and smashed cars before being subdued by police. He died in prison in 2002 of throat cancer. <coughs> Excuse me. I wanted to talk a little bit about something that Chuck has mentioned in a recent manager's meeting. Um, the fact that our competitors aren't other dealerships. They're not quickie oil change places or even Conrad's and Firestone. Our competitors are Amazon, Apple, Google, and other technology-based companies with deep pockets that are getting into the car business in a big way and who don't have the baggage that comes with traditional auto sales and service. We've seen a little bit of this from Tesla, whose customers don't have to go to their dealership for software or navigation updates, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Today's customer does most of their shopping on their smartphone. They expect to be able to buy products and services without ever talking to another human being. That's why malls across the country are closing, and Sears is likely to become a memory within the next year. Printable parts and service coupons are part of our legacy, but who prints coupons in 2017? Customers expect to be able to apply those coupons when they schedule service on our website and to order parts from an online catalog that takes their credit card. That's how they do it on Amazon, the App Store, and Google Express. When shopping for a car, customers want to see how much that lease is going to cost them specifically without having to come here to fill out paperwork or have their trade appraised. If they can't do it while watching Netflix or in a bathroom stall at work, they're increasingly reluctant to do it at all because every other website and every other business has either moved in that direction or is moving in that direction. Instead, if they can't find somebody that will allow them to do that, they find another company. Or these days, another company finds them via Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Pinterest or a combination of other social media websites and outlets. Just something to think about as we look forward and push forward with fresh eyes. Have a good weekend, motorcar.